I was so scared of the outside world as well. Like I was just scared of being ridiculed. Poster syndrome. What am I actually selling? What am I actually saying? I'm just in the front of the camera, just uh, like a clown, you know, trying to make people laugh and bringing people in. But for what though? I'm at the crossroads now where I'm like, I'm not going to use what's happened in the past in like a safety mechanism to go, oh, this is why I've acted this way or just moving forward now. Last one, last podcast we did, I was about 137. I was, I looked like bloody Hodor off Game of Thrones, really. I was, I was depressed and horny. I went into like a really weird shell where I just wasn't confident. I was scared of people writing about me. I was scared of what people said about me. What I've come to realize is that only ugly people throw stones. And once you let go of that and you focus on what you have around you and who you have around you and what you're building, then you fucking can take over the world. A lot of people were like trying to, oh, yo, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I've just got my own vision. We're just chatting about what we were, what we were doing and you know, he invests in companies and stuff like that and he goes mate like why don't we just start our own clothing brand we'll go 50 50 you just lead it and he goes off I'll, I'll fund it and we'll just build from there and i was like fucking no so i thought it was one of those you know on the piss chats and then <laughs> i've always had the choice of falling back on like oh no one will give me the shot no one will give me the keys to the car to drive you know and now i've got them i've really got no more excuses you know what i mean I've honestly removed myself from the streets. I haven't been dating. I mean, I was seeing one chick and she broke my heart, so. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. We had Jordan Simi in the house today. Had such a great chat with him, a big life update. He's always got so many crazy, exciting things going on in his life. He's gone on a lot of a big, deep, personal growth journey a lot of challenges he kind of went through over the last couple of years as you guys know about um, but he's come through the other side his energy is light it's enthusiastic he's got heaps of really exciting business projects that we talk about now so i'll leave i'll leave the intro at that we'll keep it nice and short we'll get into the podcast in in a second but can I ask for a few favors before we do um, if you're watching on youtube do me a favor like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel it takes two seconds and it really really helps me out super grateful for everyone that has been doing that lately i really appreciate it um, then if you're listening on apple podcast or spotify if you could leave us a five-star review take that time out of your day it really helps the podcast grow the bigger the podcast gets the better guests we get to have on and hopefully the more entertainment and value we bring to you guys so appreciate all the love let's get into the podcast jordan simi yes the story continues brother welcome welcome we're back, back. It's, we're back we're back it's been um it was june last year so it's like 15 months 15 Shit. months since we last on what's changed mate there's actually a lot a lot that changed i'm not um not bloody depressed anymore. That's, that's a great. Good thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing. I've lost a bit of weight. Yep. Um, a lot of relationships, <clears throat> gained, gained a, a lot of new relationships, um, got rid of a lot of old ones, um, rebuilt some uh, relationships with family. Beautiful. And heaps of, heaps of great things have come about um, in the cu- in the p- past couple of months, actually. So Your energy, I can already feel it's lighter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel good, man. I feel good, honestly. Um, uh, just what what I'm what I'm working on. Um, obviously, with Matt, you you met earlier. Just yep. that's giving me a really good big boost of energy. Just the people I'm around at the moment. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good, man. I and feel good. The vlogs are back, baby. <laughs> The vlogs, Bro, are, the back, vlogs baby. are back, man. The vlogs had to man, come back. It's vlog season, eh? The weather's getting season. warmer. Yes. You're getting ready. The come boys on, are back. Everyone it's vlog season, that. baby. It's actually vlog season. Um, we'll talk about. You just had a trip to Bali, a business trip. I want to talk about that, but before we get, <laughs> yeah, fair, before we get fair. before we get into that, I asked you a question about uh, this boxing fight, 14th of September. It's about three, four days away, mate. Yeah. So what's the story? It's apparently a long one, <sighs> mate. Yeah, it's a long story. Long story short, no. So there's a few things that that sort of played a role in this, in the, I'm not, I'm not actually fighting this weekend okay, anymore. Yeah, I was going to say like, um, fuck, he's doing a pod this yeah, place. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it, uh, we left it, I left it to last minute because I really That's not needed like to you. think about it. <laughs> yeah, you know me, man, I'm willy nilly like that. But I, I really wanted to do it obviously because like the, my opponent that I was fighting is a all blacks guy, all black, right? Yeah, all black. Um, one of my childhood heroes. Um, I mean, he's not that much older than me, but he's, yeah, he's a hero of mine. Um, and just obviously just being around family and friends back in New Zealand. But uh, uh, one thing, well, my my Achilles, my right, my right leg was just like shot. Like I'd wake up in the morning, just my leg would be swollen. Couldn't really walk properly. Had to like strap it up during training, like tight as hell, just so I could train on it. And then when I'd take it off, it'd just be effed again was wanting to push through that. My coaches were like, nah, don't do it. Just in case it does snap, he goes, 
you're, you're pretty much That's like stuffed. a year out, man. Yeah, yeah, the rehab, <laughs> the injury itself hurts. Like um, a couple of situations with my camp that uh, a couple of people couldn't travel. Um, and, yeah, just there was just a lot of neg- negativity surrounding it. And then we obviously went over to Bali uh, for a business <laughs> trip. And so when's this, when did this call get made? It's definitely off. <laughs> so... I'd say about two days ago. <laughs> yeah, it was about two days ago. Um, I called up the boys and like, I wanted to. I did. I I really did want to want to do it, but like, just it just didn't feel right. You know what I mean? And 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 plus, t- I I today's probably the first day that I s- somewhat feel. I was a little bit sick over the mm-hmm. uh, past five days, and today's probably the first day that I got a bit of fucking energy back into me. Sorry for my language, but um, yeah. So I just it just just wasn't right. Just didn't feel right. Fighting is one of those things as well. <clears throat> you don't want to go into a fight, even like, like it's, you know, boxing is what it is. You don't want to go in with another guy, massive guy when you're not, when your head's not hundred percent in the game because heavyweight boxing is different. It's too. crazy, bro. Like, yeah. Like one punch can kill you. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And these guys, and, and I got, I got, I got really sick and, you know, I won't name names, but someone from that side of the fence was, you know, going, Oh, why'd you go to Bali for? And I was like, you guys, you guys are acting like you're bloody paying me a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I'll do what I want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, so it was, it was one of those things. You know, we were still moving over there. Mm. Um, it wasn't actually to the last night. I think I ate something over there that made me really sick, and I just lost a lot of weight, spewing up, and I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it. Plus, two my leg injury, mm. that was really, really bad. So I got to, got to get more scans on that this week. So. And, um, yeah, it just didn't feel right. So I, um, and as you said, if you're not going in somewhat a hundred percent, you could literally lose your life. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm, and these guys punch hard to heavyweights, you know what I mean? Like he's 110, 115 kgs or something like that. What are you now? I'm, I'm about a 128, 125 okay. at the moment. Yeah. But around my last one. I, I would about, say you look smaller, but you're also quite big. Like you look well, quite, no, like, well, like you've leaned down a bit. Last one, last podcast we did, I was about 137. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. <laughs> I was, I looked like bloody Hodor off Game of Thrones. Really. <laughs> I was, I was depressed and horny. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> how did they, uh, how'd they take the news? Uh, yeah, not well, not well, which is, which is totally understandable. Um, but what I've, what I've realized, man, is like, you have to put yourself first. Mm. And I've always, I've always, um, I've always been scared to upset people and let people down and, or do like, you know, and so I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll half ass it. Yeah. And then I end up letting someone down anyways. And then like hurting myself in the, Mm. in the, um, in the process. And, you know, and I, I did that last fight. I took the fight on like a week's notice. Yeah. I got pretty much tapped up. It was in, not embarrassing. I did better than what was expected. But for myself, I know my own skill. I knew that if I had a proper camp, I would have done really well. So how many fights have you had now? I've only had one fight. Okay, so that's the Hodges one. That's the Hodges about. one so I'm you, talking you about. you took that on one week notice? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. So I took that on one week's notice. And then this one, I had a really good camp. I dropped almost 12 kgs yeah. in the camp. Um like I still got to pay my trainer. I'm mm-hmm. still got to, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's still things that I need to do to that, to, that I need to honor. So me simply removing myself from this fight was just <clears> because <throat> like, I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah. I dropped a lot of weight. I lost a lot of sleep. I spewed up a lot. I lost like, you know, time and training and just when you're not going in there feeling close to a hundred percent, man, you could get hurt. Bad. Particularly going up against like an ex All Black, I'm sure he's got discipline dialed in. Plus, yeah, exactly. And I'm considered like an influencer box, you know, influencer boxer. So that's just people want to get want to see you get knocked out. You <laughs> know what I mean? So, and in New Zealand as well, they they're very they they like to see blood like that. You know, <laughs> yeah, okay. so I I just you know, um, you feel you like you're more put- love from Australia or New Zealand, man. Uh, Loves for the week, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, yeah, probably. Oh man, to be honest, it's 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 mixed, man. It's yeah. mixed. I went when I went home, man. I met. I ran into so many people that knew me from the back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was nice to be home, but uh, yeah, I'd mostly mostly Aussies, mm. mostly uh, like get around me. Cool. So you reckon you'll do a fight in the future? Uh, well, I've already been offered another fight mm-hmm. yesterday in um, in January. Yeah. Back in New Zealand. Um, but 
everything just has to everything has to be somewhat right man you have yeah. to, everything has to be perfect you know and it starts with the purse so <laughs> let's get that right it's first. a lot easier yeah. to put everything else into 100%. that no, but realistically man, like you're we pay, laugh if about you're it pay me you know <clears throat> 50k i'll go in there willy-nilly you know what i mean <laughs> but it's it Sometimes like things like, don't outweigh other things. People and think it's fifty k for one night, but it's not. It's your 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 whole life leading <laughs> yeah. into that for many months. Hundred percent. You you like you like I know about this fight in January now, right? Mm. So I'll probably sign the paperwork over the next two months, three months. But you're training for it now. You know what I mean? You're training for it now, and then you get about eight weeks out, going to a camp. You're paying your trainers. You probably train twice a day. So whatever your trainer works out to be. Maybe 20, 25 percent depends on where you're training. You might go stay somewhere, accommodation. You know what I mean. So, and then all these other. I, I was going to get this. Um, I had a, a really big um, sponsorship lined up, and that fell through due to certain clashes in sponsorship with the event. So, I was just like, well, I'm not here to. I'm here to make money first. You yeah. know what I mean? But with uh, my leg, my leg, I was really, really hesitant, but I was like, you know what? I'll just strap it up. And then I got sick. Yep. And I was just like, no, nah, I, can't, I can't do it. Bali belly will get you, huh? Bali belly and yeah, I don't mind. I won't say that on, on camera. Never mind. But like the vlogs, man. No, we got to take this out. <laughs> we got to... So talk to me about Bali. Um, you obviously, you were going over there for the new business you're working on. Well, that Share was initially the plan. Sort of... That was initially the plan. And just got just got caught in a vibe, eh? Well, when you when you're around the, when you're around the boys, it's hard not to get caught up in a vibe. But uh, <laughs> we and the, the initial plans were to go and check manufacturers out over there, and I did actually get in contact with one, so we might have to go back over there in the next couple of weeks. But um, man, yeah, we just went over there. I think I think um, my business partner and I we were just we actually just needed to have a little break. To be fair, like we still we still went out for dinners and shit over, but we was just good to get away from Sydney for a week. Yeah. Um, and the one person that I get, did get in contact with uh, a friend of mine runs a clothing company through there, but, uh, I, I'm, I think we're most likely going to go through our manufacturers in China that we've been communicating with. So we we got to find a translator for that person at the moment. So that's, that's been its own little journey in itself. But yeah, talk to me about going over to Bali. I've, you know, gone through the process. I've got a, also a clothing brand on the back burner, but like, yes. So many fucking different things that I, you know, want to do and always slides down the priority list. What was the thoughts on, you know, potentially going to Bali versus, you know, China? Well, <laughs> it was like, it was, uh, we're very willy nilly. Mm -hmm. Like if you feel it, then if we feel it, then we just, we go, we yeah, go yeah, with yeah, it, you yeah. know what I mean? So we just looked cool at it. Cool and intuitive. I, yeah, exactly. Intuitive. It felt right. And I mean, we were wrong, but at the time it felt right. <laughs> you live but and you learn, baby. Exactly, exactly. But I think um, I just we just wanted to go check it out over there. You know, mm. we wanted to just go see what it was like. I had I had a few friends that run their clothing companies over there um, through a couple of manufacturers over there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was really short lived. To be honest with you, I think I visited it one day and then ended up going to party with the bloody uh, Indonesian mafia. <laughs> No joke. That better be in the vlog. Come <laughs> yeah. on, put that in the vlog. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about the idea for the brand. Like who, like you and Matt been working on it for a little bit now. Talk to oh, me about, yes. talk to me about some of the thoughts behind it and, you know, kind of what you want to do differently in coming into, coming into the clothing space. I've always been a part of clothing brands mm. and just seen the whole scale and build outs and the design process. And I just, I, like, you know, I'm a big fan of fashion as well. I mm. love, I love it. I love the process. So it's it's a very expensive game though. It's an expensive very. game, time consuming. Um, you have to have the right people around you. And a lot of people are starting these companies. So if if you don't get it right, if you don't get the marketing right, then it can you can go your first collection and then fucking blow out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Matt and I met, oh, it would have been about a, a couple of years ago, eh? Like just briefly playing poker at a mate's place, yeah. a couple of strippers. No, no, I'm joking. Um, I'm joking, I'm joking. But we were playing poker. Um, and, yeah, it was just, that's that's when we met. And then it wouldn't be probably about three, four months ago, um, we became pretty tight, mm -hmm. uh, me, uh, myself, and Dan. And um, we were just chatting about, what we were, what we were doing. And, you know, he invests in companies and stuff like that. And he goes, mate, like, 
because so many people would come up to me and be like, man, why aren't you starting your own thing? And da, 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 and I'm, and you know, it's like, cause you need money to start your, you know? And then he goes, why don't we just start our own clothing brand? We'll go 50, 50. He goes, you just, you just lead it. And he goes, I'll, I'll fund it and we'll just build from there. And I was like, Fucking nice. So I thought it was one of those, you know, on the piss chats and then <laughs> messages before, the next morning. Yeah, like we just we just kept going, kept going. Yeah. So um, you know, it's and when you know, initially he just was like, nah, you just do it. But it's cool when you can build something with someone and you jump off ideas and um, you know, you, it's when someone's spending their money, you want them to be involved, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they can't look back and go, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've been we've been doing that together, and and that's it. Sort of just came about just by chance, actually. So, how much have you shared about like the name of the brand? Is that public or anything yet? <laughs> yeah, we've said it a couple of times, but mm. it's past love. It's called past love. Yeah. Um, it's not just like you might have a past love, like a person, a place, a time, um, a moment, whatever it may be. One of those names that'll mean something different to everyone. Else. Like exactly. It's, it's, yeah. It's exactly. Individual. Um, to myself, it's my beautiful ex girlfriend. I love you care about you <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fuck, we've gone back I'm, in time I'm joking. <laughs> take me back now um you know same as the same as matt's as well it's a, <laughs> it's a moment in time it's gonna, a moment i was gonna ask time. who are you fighting for this time but you're not you Mate, don't have a fight nah, anymore nah. <laughs> no one to fight for that's why you put yeah, out my ass like this there's nothing no getting one about to fight it. for man no sheila's getting for around the there <laughs> so anyways we he came up with the name. Um, it's a pretty cool name. I'll give you that. Yeah, cool it is. Name. Everyone, so we were sitting at, at breakfast, right, mm -hmm. and we were like, wow, okay, we need to come up with a name. Literally these things take, I know mates who are can still take trying ages. to- Take ages. Take ages. This was our first conversation. He goes, like, because we were at the time <laughs> talking about this and that, and he's like, well, why don't we just call it past love? And we're sitting around the table and, you know, me being- I'm the I'm the creative guy. I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. And then, it, <laughs> and then other boys are like, no, oh, that's a really good game. And I was like, oh, shit, it is it is really good. Yeah. yeah. So we just stuck with it, man. And and we've actually just been like ticking the important things off. You know, mm. sometimes people just go out the gate. And they're yeah. like, yeah, there's a clothing brand. You haven't trademarked it. You haven't mm. done. We're just doing everything. We've got someone building out like a really, really, really good website. Yeah. Um, we're just getting all the samples, things that we like in, um, building like trying to build out like six to 12 months ahead of time. So, cause a lot of people focus on that one collection. And then once you drop that then you're like, Oh shit, shit. Gotta I've got to design yeah. another one and I've got to order them in again. So mm. you lose that juice. You know what I mean? So we want to be backed up like four collections. So it's like bang, you know, market from the start. Bang. That's a pretty big effort. Um, <laughs> it's a big effort. Yeah. What are you thinking in terms of like, what's, you know, where, where are you going to fit? What sort of garments, what sort of pieces, what sort of style? Yeah. Obviously I know you're like your artistic style. Is yeah. that going to be like sort of reflected in we'll this? Sneak, we'll sneak a bit of that in. Um, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll bring a little bit of that in. Like, mm -hmm. so we'll have the, like the leisure wear where we'll play around a little bit more with. Yeah. So there'll be sort of, two collections each drop if you get me like yep. um we'll have the leisure wear sort of like like la lounging around so he'll he's actually just he should have bought someone today but they look they look pretty mad mm -hmm. um oversized boxed out and then the other stuff is um how would you say it like it would be on the same it would be around the same like sort of just um Mykonos vibes, mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Summer, like Europe summer type yeah. vibe, but a bit oversized. Like I, I'll show you photos afterwards, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it would be a fear of God meets Venroy. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Sick. So just finding that space in between, but if people will goes, Oh, where, where do you want people wearing your stuff? It's like, you know, like, you know, when you go to the movies with your girlfriend or you go on like a, little midweek date with a girl or ice cream run and you go like you got your essentials hoodie and you've got your <laughs> quick silver hoodie. You're like, I'm going to chuck my essentials hoodie on. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's, that's where the space, that's where we sit. That's where we sit. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, <laughs> people say the target market would be the fuck boys. <laughs> respectfully. respectfully, 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 all the lover boys. Yeah. yeah the lover yeah, boys. All. Just a quick one from me. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you'd know that after scaling Happy Skin Co to over $10 million per year, I spent close to 18 months creating the Viral Brand Builder program which teaches someone with zero experience how to launch and scale their very own e-commerce brand. With over 100 training videos and direct access to me, including one-on-one -on -one calls, you'll be guided throughout the entire process. Now, we already have a bunch of incredible results from students that are making multiple five and six figures per month. So if you want to learn how to build a business that has the potential to completely change your life, 
then click the link in the description and book in an application call today. Spots are limited as you'll be speaking directly to me. So hopefully I'll chat to some of you soon, but until then, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah. Where, where, where do you, what are you, what are you called now? What's your, what's the street cred of Jordan Simmy's name on the street? Mate, honestly, I've, I've, I've honestly removed myself from the streets. <laughs> I have, haven't been dating. I mean, I was seeing one chick and she broke my heart. So, I mean, <laughs> I just, I, I've just removed myself from the dating scene, mate. Wow. Yeah. It's a big loss. It's a big loss. Yeah. No, I, I was actually talking about it on a podcast today. I, uh, it's another podcast today. Yeah. Busy mate. boy. Yeah, busy boy, man. We're back. back, vlogs the, vlogs are back. Are back. <laughs> the vlogs the are vlogs back. The vlogs are back. <laughs> the vlogs are back. No, it's but. Jordan Simmy season, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's past you love you, season. You past haven't, love you haven't season. done much since last time we had you on. Yeah. I was like, let me let me do a bit of research, see what, what he's been talking about. Man. There's not, nothing a whole lot recent. No, I, I mean, I'd, I would always get like, I always get like these. I just needed to just chill. Yeah. Like remove myself from everything. Um, I had had a few offers to go be a part of like betting companies and all this jazz and, you know, um, but it just didn't feel right. Nothing felt right. You know, like I even, I actually shout out to what ability, mm -hmm. uh, my mate, Steve, he, he started what abilities, uh, owner of that. And, and, um, I, I, I started working there and it was just nice. It was lovely. You know, like it just, I was just cruising bro. And it was just so nice to like remove myself from because I realized that I can't be myself when I work for other people. You know what okay. I mean? Like, and not that I'm disrespectful or that, but I'm just one of those people that I rock the boat, you know, and, it, and, and I, and, and I don't like, I don't like to answer to other people. Like, not, not that I don't like working with other people, just when you have to answer to someone else, it's really hard to get your, your ideas and your thoughts out there. And it might not, might rob people the wrong way, but, I feel like you just have to create your own wave if you want to say what you want to say. I was looking back <clears throat> earlier this morning at our, at our last podcast just to see what we were talking about. And there was a part we were talking about essentially that like you just, you have to do things your own way. You can't be a box ticker. And you got like a little bit emotional talking about that yeah. and like not being put in a box, you know? Yeah. Why does that sort of stuff, you know, being unique and being able to fully express yourself, the, your true self, why is that, why is that so important to you? What do you think is about that, that you just like, I cannot, and I will not submit to any other way. Uh, I think, I think, uh, I just can't help it. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't help it, man. I, I, I can really relate. can't, I can't, I can't help it. Like I've had mm. really, really, really great opportunities and stuff like that, but it's just, there's, I've always just, and this is why I like, I love Matt so much, right? Like he's given me this opportunity that, a lot of people had the option to give me, yeah, but wanted me to still be a part of that wave, but like not be a part of the wave. If you get mm -hmm. me, you know what I mean. And like here, go do this, but you yeah, know, within like you yeah, still got to answer to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, all I've always all I all I'd say is like, all I need is a shot. All I need is a shot. Just someone get like, and. You know, and it's it's hard when to get a shot when you're a cowboy as well, which is <laughs> yeah. respectfully. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm like telling these guys to give me a shot on day two, but I'm <laughs> like, ready, coach. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So um, now this is this this is the opportunity that I've been waiting for, and I think, <clears throat> yeah, I just I think this is just fate, really. Where does that leave the art? Because you were doing some pretty cool stuff. Like I've only been doing art for a few years, selling pieces for 10 grand. Well, this is the thing, right? I these these the the art was was going really, really well. And it still has the opp opportunity to, but what was happening was like you start to uh, compromise your yourself as an artist when you're like, you're doing it just you're like, shit, I need money. So to like sell, if someone's like, like, hey, can you pay, po like paint me a Pikachu with wings? You're like, fucking hell. You're like, yeah, sure. Like just to get get by, you know what I mean? That's that's like no, no like metaphorically speaking. But he people would just you're just throwing out art pieces that just weren't aligned. I was putting out art that wasn't aligning with me. Mm. And a lot of people were like trying to, yo, yo, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I've just got my own vision. And yeah. whether it works, it works. Or if I meet people that I align with, that I'm like, hey, listen, we can both bring something to the table here. Let's fucking mm -hmm. rip in. You know what I mean? And I think that's just the beauty of the position I'm in now. Because now I, I actually feel this is the first time in maybe three, four months that I've actually wanted to paint like a full collection. Wow. So I'm, 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 I'm planning that out at the moment. Because legit, man, like I'm not a big art guy. 
Um, so I can't, I can't like name a lot of like current artists, but genuinely, I think you're my favorite artist. Oh, fuck, man. Thank you so much, bro. That's legit, bro. Like, go look. If you haven't seen his pieces, you just think We're this back. is similar. He like, loves like taking the piece. And, bro, the pieces, when I look at your stuff, like, it makes you think, it makes you feel something. Thank you, bro. That's it's genuinely <laughs> hectic stuff. Yes. The vlogs are back. Yeah, the vlogs are back, baby. Yes. It's not bro, legit, bro. Thank like, you I hope so you, much, yeah, bro. I think you, you just got to do it where you just go fucking, don't listen to anyone. Whatever comes, yes. you got three, five, ten pieces of art you want to go, don't do it. I've, don't I've, tell I'm, anyone. I'm planning out ten now at the moment. I actually mm. started on his one. He, <laughs> He purchased one off me off off uh, off plan, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, probably about I'd say about three months ago. And he's like, he'll look at his wall and he'll be like, and it'll, I can see it click in his head, and I'm like, oh shit. And he's like, where the fuck is my <laughs> painting? So I actually started on that yesterday, believe it or not. Can't, you so, can't rush art, baby. No, you can't, man. You but can't I'm, rush I'm gonna art. I'm gonna do a ten piece. I'm gonna do mm. ten pieces. I'm I'm actually in a very positive mindset right now. Yeah, that uh, I'm planning out these ten pieces that I'm gonna drop. Mm. Um, create content around it, yeah. but like in each one, it can be a story, right? Yeah, exactly, man, exactly. So I think I think I've always been a little bit scared as well. This is this is what I was talking to a friend about. Is that I've I've always had the I've always had the choice of falling back on like oh no one will give me the shot, mm -hmm. you know, no one will give me the keys to the car to drive, you know, and now I've got them. Now I'm like. I've really got no more excuses. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've, I've got, I've got everything pretty much in front of me to go, Hey, listen, like here's the money. Here's the, here's what you need to yeah. build a, a clothing company. You talk to big game, let's get it, get it yeah. done, you know? So, and uh, the, all the art falls into it as well. Mm. So it's, how all, is it? it's you, all creating at the end you, of the day. You, you put, you, you're part of an exhibit. You're part of a show or something, right? You're like that some show of your pieces. That I was a part of? Yeah. Yeah. So that show was curated by the uh, director of National Art School. Mm -hmm. um, and Stephen, is that Stephen Alderton? That guy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like the big dog of the art industry in Australia. Mm -hmm. And like uh, on paper, I had no, I actually had no uh, right being in that art <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> so about three or four of those other artists, so eight were selected, mm -hmm. including myself. Um, and about three or four of them had won the Archibald Award. So, and the others had all, uh, had all graduated with like, what do you call it? Full like, degrees and yeah, like in the, from the National Art School. So these guys were like the best of the best mm. in Australia. And then you got like an old silly old street artist coming <laughs> in here just painting with his feet. But I, I, uh, my, my, uh, and you, my one was one of the only ones that sold. So what piece did you have in there? I painted, okay. So the funny thing with that is I had painted so many about, because I only got two weeks' notice for that. And all everyone else had about six months to paint for it. So I got I took my piece in and the owner of the art gallery was like, no, you can't be in here. Like, that's not good enough. And then I was like, in front of everyone too. And I and at that moment actually I I, I got a bit offend I got really offended, but then I thought, well, like, who cares? And that 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 moment actually changed changed me as a person individually. You know, when we go through things, you can it can either make or break you. Yeah. I thought. He goes, yeah, no, nah, that's not allowed. And they were arguing about it. The, the director of National Art School was on my side and he's like, I can't have that in my art gallery. They initially didn't really want me to be a part of the mm -hmm. exhibition. Just because you're so, too rogue, you're not part of the inner circle. Yeah, the inner it, circle yeah. vibes, you know. And, um, you know, <laughs> so I just said, I'll paint a new one right here, right now. <laughs> so this was, a two, this was about a day or two out of the exhibition. I was like, I'll paint a new one here, right here, right now. So then I ended up painting... <laughs> I ended up painting two of them. They both sold. Um, it was called Romeo and Juliet. Uh, the idea of it was based around Romeo and Juliet, but it was it was actually a story of um, two lovers um, that had uh, that there, it was uh, forbidden love. Mm -hmm. They couldn't be together. Just life got in the way. Family, uh, their love was so strong, but it just couldn't keep them together. So, one art piece I sold. The other piece was sold to a random person that I don't even know where it's gone ever. So. The idea is that eventually these two pieces will find each other, find each other again, and the love will be connected. That's mad, yeah, bro. Yeah, That's actually yeah, hectic. I love that. Yeah. So I, I, I that. painted those these pieces with the owner of the gallery, and he go and he got to know me more. And he goes, you know what? He goes, you're actually. He goes, I actually thought you're a stuck up 
asshole. And I said, mate, I'll tell you what I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm the I best looking paint. dude here, but I can paint and I can play drums. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, so then he goes, he's, so he painted with me. <laughs> I got the buckets that I was sitting on. I was playing drums at the back. Um, oh. So then we were like, we were, we were just painting him and I at the back of the art gallery in, in the, in the, um, <sighs> like literally, what do you call those uh, alleyways? Like yeah, cool. just, it was just him and I, and this guy like sells like thousands of thousands of dollars. He would have sold millions of dollars over the time. So this is the owner, not the director, right? No, no, no. This is now the, the, the owner the now actual, who didn't actually yeah. like really fuck ah. with me. So now he's spending time with me, teaching me different strokes, teaching me uh, about paint and the dry, and like, you know, these are all things that I didn't. Cause you just free it right when you started. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I was using no. house paint. <laughs> I pulled out house paint. He goes, she's just like, Jesus Christ. I said, man, this is all I can afford. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, so he got me a couple of paints and I didn't realize, I was like, I hate this paint. I need the house paint. <laughs> and then he's like, he's, he, so him and I started vibing and he, and in, so we opened it up and I get about 150 people to it. So this whole thing's packed out and, you know, people are taking photos, mostly around mine. And the person next to me just won the um, Archibald award. And her piece was up for like 80,000 and my one was up for like 10 grand. And then, uh, and then believe it or not, Isra man from the Broncos, wow. he, he bought it. That's mad. <laughs> so he bought it online. He's That's like, mad. yo, I want, I want this piece. That's so cool. he purchased it. Um, and yeah. And then that was pretty much the only one that sold from the exhibition really. So, um, that must be a pretty cool feeling though. Like after being the outcast, the guy coming, you know, they didn't even want in. Yeah. No credentials. Like well, it was, it was so confusing for me as well. Right. Because, you know, I'm not the fucking richest guy, but at the time, like I could only paint with what I could afford or what I had left over. So I learned how to mix different colors and stuff like that. And, you know, you can get advice from people, but when like, I, I felt like some of the other artists were like, Oh, you shouldn't be using that paint. You shouldn't be using that paint. And I'm like, bro, I, this is all I can f and afford. Pa painting is actually a really expensive process. Mm. So um, yeah, I was like, this is all I can afford, man. This is all that, you know, and house paint lasts forever. So I'm like, chuck this fucking, chuck it on, get it on. So that <clears throat> the director of, of, um, of, I, of, I of wanna, the gallery, I want to be, I still, even though it's like, I, I believe it's, I'm a sleeping giant with it. Like I still want to be the biggest artist in Australia. Like, and it, it might not be the most appealing to the eye, but like, I want to, be the most sorted after artist in Australia, like within the next two years, I believe I will. And, you know, and I, I genuinely believe that my art, even when like I painted that in the alleyway, but as soon as you put that piece of that red devil looking thing in that, in the gallery, it like consumed the room. You know what I mean? Like people were drawn to it. Like they had no choice, but to go and look at it. Yeah. And I felt like, I felt like all my pieces do that. Like, they do. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it, it like draws. And you, don't, you don't know. You almost don't know why. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's a Teletubby holding a, <laughs> a baseball bat. Like what the, you know what I mean? But it's, 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 uh, I think it's because when I do paint, I do paint with like a certain emotion with it. it most of the time it's happiness. When I'm happy, I paint. When I'm sad, oh shit. Get like, on the beers. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get on the piss and then yeah. I paint. Um, but. That's the old thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just, that's what I, 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 and even with this, the fashion now, so it's all going to go hand in hand. You know what I mean? So the director, what the director that, you know, stood up for you and advocated for your work at the start, what did he see in you? Like, because you were this outsider, right? He would have, yeah. I'm sure he would have said, Hey Jordan, you're in here because. Well, so, okay. What, what initially happened was I, and I speak openly on this, you know, I was going through a really weird time in my life at the, at the moment. No, really no, I lost a lot of direction. I went on a two day bender and um, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I went on a two day Larry and um, I go to my mate's birthday. I had no choice but to push through. I go to my mate's birthday and this random guy just sits next to me who only came with uh, a friend, Andrew Mustin. <laughs> so he comes to sit next, next to me and um I was, you know, I knew he didn't really know anyone, so I wanted to make him feel comfortable and we'd just start yarning, having a beer. And it's like, what do you do? I go, I'm an artist. And he's like, oh, oh, what? Like, like, like a rapper? And I was like, why would I be a rapper? But obviously, you know, 
he read it wrong, read the room wrong. But then um, I was, so he ends up being on the national, uh, the national art school like board. So he's like, man, your art is incredible. Like, can we go for, can we go for dinner next week? Again, I thought these are one of these times where people are just talking shit on the piss. <laughs> Anyways, he hits me up. We go for dinner on Tuesday. He goes, I, I really want to introduce you to the director of the national art school. He's like, I, I think he might want to mentor you. Wow. So I'm like, okay, cool. I don't even know what that means, but I'm <laughs> yeah, like, sweet as sweet. cool. Let's go meet bloody <laughs> Professor Snape. But so I go meet, I go meet him at the National Art School. And you had had no, no experience with like artists. No, or, no, yeah, nothing, yeah. no, nothing. Like this is. So I didn't really know how big this was, you know. And and I walk into the office, and you know, he's a very intricate guy, you know. Like he doesn't, he, you can tell he can just can read people really well. And so he just like looks at me, and he's he's like. He's like, what do you want from art? And he's like, are you just using art or are you? And I was like, I was like, man, I, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, mate, can I, can I, I have a, a box? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here right now. I thought I was coming here to get some free paintbrushes. But I, yeah, no, I just, I, I just, I think I just told him, I can't really remember, but I just, I went hard. I was like, man, I want to be the biggest artist in Australia. Like, and he's like, what about the world? And I was like, mate, I, I'll start with Australia first and we'll go from there. But I think the difference as well is like if you can marry art with your like content creation yeah. piece and that storytelling piece, yeah. I think the amount of cut through you're going to get that other people aren't even going to be able to figure out how do they get the art to the world. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Something you can do like differently. 100%. And it's like it just coexists. I, I, I felt like I need, I need art to just coexist with my life. Mm. I can't. I can't. It can't be my main thing because it's just it's it's destroying the process for me. Like it can't be like my main source of income because when I'm painting and I've got fucking Tom hitting me up like, "Yo, bro, where's my piece?" Like, yeah, which is fair enough. That's I'm not angry at him, but it's more so me rushing the process of mm. going, you know. And sometimes I finish it really quick, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." But it's when I'm not happy within myself, then I can't paint. So then. I've left people out like like Matt, for example, has been waiting for them three months. So it's like I need to it, it needs to just be there for me. How long how long does it take you to do one of those big pieces? Like one of the ones you sell for ten k. <sighs> Sometimes it takes like say that red one for mm -hmm. example. That yeah. one sold for quite a bit. That one took me a day. One day. Well, not even that really. Yeah. <laughs> but then some take me. Some take me three months, four months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's um it's a beautiful thing, man. And I can't wait to share this next bit with everyone. So when you when you say you you've already got like an idea for a collection, is it is it an emotion? Is it a is it a story? Like how do you plan that out? Um, so pretty much what I'll do is I can only do big paintings, right? Mm. So I will, I, I, I never really plan a piece out, right? Like I'll have, I'll have bullet points on sort of like uh, this goat one time that I painted. Um, that's a, that was just off the back of, uh, of something that I read on the news, mm -hmm. but I could just, it just, when I'm happy, it just organically comes. I listen to Kanye West when I'm yeah. painting and it just automatic, it just, it just comes to me. And at the time it might look like where I paint in the garage, it might look like shit. But when you remove that painting from the garage to the gallery, it's like changes its whole. So people will look at it from where it's at in that time. And they'll be like, oh, that's actually not, that looks weird. Mm. But then I'll take it to the gallery and they'll go, holy shit. So it's just environment. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just removing that from the garage. And, and I can see that at the time I can be like, this would fit perfectly and, you know, I'd love to see the next collection, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be painting, love to I'm see painting it. it all in the next couple of weeks. So I love it, bro. Um, and then as you continue to grow, like we said, you've gone on this massive growth journey over the last 12 months, your art will develop, you know, and change over the next, you know, yeah. many, many years. Um, speaking of that journey you've gone on, <clears throat> I know you're very like, you know, deep thinker, processing things. You spend a lot of time in your own head. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes obviously has negative effects. What's like one thing, like one realization, one lesson that you've took out of the last year that you're like, wow, that's, that's, that's big for me to get. Is there anything that stands out? Anything that's changed yeah. within you? Anything you've learned? Yeah. Something that I've learned right now that I probably 
will be uh, oh, 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 is um like uh, relationships. You know me. I used to love love. Used you know? to. I love the idea of it, but I think um, I think for me, right? I was so drawn to relationships with chicks or like, you know, partners because I, I wasn't 100% within myself. So I was like looking to like build these relationships with, you know, I met some amazing girls. My ex was an amazing person, um, has done amazing things. And, and that was, it was the most realest love I've ever experienced. And it was so beautiful, but because I wasn't, full within myself, within my own backyard, things were, I were, hadn't ticked off all these boxes. I was, was putting stress within our relationship because I just wasn't um, fully, you know, a hundred percent a man within myself. So there was so much stress on my relationship and I then realized that it was the case with all my relationships. So one thing I've taken away is that I'll never get into another relationship until I have majority of these boxes. Am I close to that? Hell no. I've still got a long way. And I'm very grateful to have some really amazing people in my life right now. Uh, Matt, Dan, the boys, like, and, but we're moving, we're making, we're making, we've got goals, you know what I mean? So I know that eventually I will be that person, but now I've stepped away from the idea of being in another relationship for a long time until I'm able to be that guy. It's a, it's a massive step, even the awareness of what you just said. You wouldn't have had any fucking idea what you were doing. That was just, you know, that was you being you. It's all your self-protection mechanisms yeah. as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So even the awareness in that is a, is a massive step. But you're almost putting like all your hopes and dreams of a happy life yeah. onto the pressure of this one girl yeah, who has to like yeah, yeah. make you make up for everything you've ever lacked, everything you've ever feared, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and there was all these, you know, just – you know, the, these, um, you know, you're always going to have, you know, troubles that come up, but just not being able to deal with them properly. Mm. It was just putting a lot of, putting a lot of pressure on others to do what I should just be doing for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or just trying to create little side things. Um, it's, it's, it's part of growing up, bro. There's no manual for this. You've had as well, like a very pr pretty hard life in, in, in a lot of different stages as well. And that yeah. shit, you know, trauma manifests in your life at different stages yeah. in different ways. Yeah. And I think, I think is ugh, not a thing. I know, I know for, a, for a fact, right. Is you use these things as like a fallback to go, Oh, you know what? I've done this and I've, uh, this is why I've reacted that way. And I, I I honestly could not be thankful for the position I'm in today with with my crew, and that's why I'm so passionate about what we're doing. Um, but I I just I'm at that time I'm at the crossroads now where I'm like I'm not going to use what's happened in the past in like a a safety mechanism to go oh this is you know why I've acted this way or mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just moving forward now yep. of you know and and. And I've, I've reached out to people from my past, family, friends. Um, even when I went back to New Zealand, I caught up with a lot of family that I had a lot of anger built up towards them and then me. It's all been good, man. It's all good energy, good vibes, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to just push that out towards people that are in my inner circle um, and loved ones. So It's like you said, like first steps awareness, <clears throat> and then with the awareness, it can be really easy to use that as a crutch or an excuse to fall back on. Yes. Right. <clears throat> and where you're going sounds like you're trying to not do that anymore. Yeah. From my experience, you know, and we, and we all have different things that we don't do right. You know, we're all trying to navigate, particularly in relationships, it's really <laughs> difficult. Like if you, yeah. if you do catch it, right, yourself exhibiting one of those bad, you know, habits that you get into whenever, yeah. whatever's making you feel not good to just realize it, own it and say it and say, yeah. look, it's not an excuse, but that's probably why I don't want to be like that. Yeah. It's a big step in the right direction. Yeah. It's just like, how, how long can you feel sorry for yourself? You know? And, and sometimes you don't want to, you don't want to go out there and say too many things because yeah, you, you, you don't, there's, you know, there's certain people watching that you're like, uh, they're like, they don't believe in you. You know what I mean? So I, I'm at a point now where I'm just, I'm like, it's just time now. This is the perfect time to get things done and make things right. And um, 
I think back in the day when we met, I was, I was like, a, I was pushing out like a negative persona. I mean, it sound fun and positive, but like, you know, the whole party thing beforehand, before the podcast. So now it's just a different energy, different vibe, man. It's all, <clears throat> and even we had a great chat before. I obviously rewatched it this morning. You're, you seem a lot more calm. Yeah. I feel you were a lot closer to coming out the back end of all that shit before as well. Yeah. So it didn't have the benefit of all the time to kind of settle. Yeah. Were, I, yeah. I felt, I felt, um, I, I don't really like, I don't really, I don't really go, I'm not really an emotional person anymore. Um, I, I act on like logic and, um, I'm really good at like looking at situations right now and then just, I mostly look within now. I don't, I don't get angry at anyone. I don't blame anyone else for any of my wrongdoings or anything that goes on. If I look at a situation, I go, why, if it's negative, I'm like, why am I even in this situation? Because I put myself here. I, I always look within. I don't have any anger towards anyone else because I feel like when you do, you lose yourself. So now I'm just, you have to look within, man, and it's, it's a beautiful thing when you can do that. One, one of my favorite quotes, I don't even know if it's a quote from someone or I just said it the first time myself, but true growth is when you're sick of your own shit. Yes. Because you can go through the same thing so many times, right? And yeah. then other people get sick of it first, right, because they're not you, they can see it. And then eventually yeah. – You've done the same shit yeah, so many times yeah, yeah. and you know and you can yeah. see it coming yeah. and you go through it and then you're at that low state and you're just like, bro, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. enough is yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, and I and honestly, I yeah, it's it's only it's it's only recently come about, but everything's everything's on the up now, man. And mm. usually this is when I would go fucking missing, but yeah, now it's time to double down. To and, not let that happen, yeah, right? Exactly. Exactly, bro. You seem yeah. in more control of you know, honestly, it's just what it's, decisions you make and, you know, not having one of those, okay, I've been really good for the last three months. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> Fuck, where's Jordan? Oh, we're celebrating. <laughs> no, but you know, in the, no, I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. No, you're so right, bro. And, um, as I said, man, it's, 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 uh, knowing your strengths and having just a good crew around you and doing mm. right by that crew. What I, what I realized is I had so many friends, I had so many acquaintances and people around me and I'd always be that guy will go to places and people were like, send me, send me, send me, send me. And I, I realized that and I, I, I heard, a, I just heard a couple of things. Like I can't remember exactly the quote, but like when you have too many friends, like, you know, like it's not a good sign. It's, I mean, it, it, I can't, that's I, interesting. Yeah. I've and, never heard it, but just thinking yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I think it was, uh, Mike Tyson was talking about it. Yeah. Um, and I had heard it a couple of times. I read in a couple of books. So then I ended up, I ended up, it, it actually just happened organically, but I ended up culling my inner circle. So maybe like four guys, four people. Um, and, you know, you always have people that come in and out, but there's those four people that I genuinely know now that I will protect, do anything for. If they're not in the room and someone's saying something about them, I'll have their backs. You know what I mean? Like friendship can be very willy-nilly in Sydney especially. Um, especially but, in the East. But now well. I, I don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere without them. They don't go anywhere without me. If we're in the business meetings or if we're at dinners or we're, we're together all the time, you know what I mean? So, um, and I think that that's the way it should be. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what people need to do. Like you said before, when you were talking about it, like, yeah, you go out, you have fun, you, you know, you still party together at times, but you're all going places. Yeah. There's goals behind it. And yeah. that's the more important thing. Whereas like at times in the past, you probably were just too caught in chasing the yeah. vibe. In the yeah. Time. Chasing the vibes and like everyone's all oh, going part like, like the, the circle that I'm in now, these guys, like yeah, they, they, they hustle, they work hard. And, you know, so it's like you want to be able to learn and you want to be able to uh, give back and like try and create more of that energy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, for sure. So what do you, what do you say? You're, like, do you think your priorities have changed over the last year? I just want to win, bro. I just want to win now. And I felt like, I felt like um, not, might not, not be much like the people I was with, but. I just needed a change of scenery and then also the vision has changed. And I've always wanted to have this opportunity to build a clothing brand and to build a creative space where, wherever it may lead off to. But, mm. and, and, and since doing these little things, it's somehow brought us together and it's given us this opportunity to do so. I love that. And I think you, but the, the type of person you are, we all know like you, 
And like I said this as well, like the, the thing about you, you walk into any room and just everyone's like, fuck, it's Timmy, you know? And you going out in the East, so many people know you, can be really easy while, you, while you're just, you know, in that, like you said, chasing the yeah. vibe. All these people want to go and spend half an hour, an hour with you. But like yeah. in a way they're doing it with the best intentions because like, oh my God, it's Timmy, yeah. but it's taking away your energy. It's taking away your energy. But you know what I've what I've realized, man, is, is when you, um, I, I've, I've found that I've connected so many people. Mm -hmm. Business wise, like I've connected some real estate agents to some property owners and some, you know, all these things, mates, <clears> I've introduced mates to mates and they've become best friends. And so I, I don't think it's initially uh, essentially a bad thing, but you want to bring, but you want to be able to bring something to the table. You know, you want to be able to give back and to provide knowledge and quality time, not just through partying and shit like that. So I've, I've actually stepped back a lot from giving a lot of people my time, um, willy nilly, like not, you know, not just for the sake of just being there. And, um, and we keep a tight cir circle now, you know what I mean? So what are you grateful for at the moment, man? I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for my mates. I'm grateful for Matt, grateful for Dan. Um, these guys, these guys picked me up, man. They picked me up and I wasn't initially essentially in a, in a bad space, but I just, they picked me up in a way of like, yo, like, you know, we're going here, we're here, we're going here and you know, we're taking you with us. And it's just a whole different energy, you know, like mm -hmm. a couple of rat bags just met up and got after it. You know what I mean? So I'm learning as I go. And, you know, there's numbers been thrown around that I, like I could only dream about, but just to be in that space, it makes you think like, am I being the best I can be? Probably not right now, but it's like, I want to be, you know, so motivate you to, you know, stay on the right path. hundred percent, hundred percent, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you as well, like my, my, um, I was saying to the boys, I'm, I'm, my family live up in the Gold Coast. My two daughters live up in the Gold Coast and, you know, that's, that's been a tough tough gig, them staying up there, me living down here. So um, I said, I go, I'm going to relocate back up there and then come back down week on, week off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't really matter if I'm up there work-wise. So, yeah, I'm shooting back up there Ooh. and I'm going to be spending a lot more time up there with them so that that whole relationship's being rebuilt and my family's, my with my mother's moving there as well mm -hmm. to live with me up there. So it's all good vibes, man. Opportunity for like reconnection as this new version of Sim, like much more mature, more healed. I'm still, I suppose, I mean, you know? I'm still a rat bag. I'm still a bit crazy. You don't want to lose what makes you you. Yeah. And I can't help it. I literally can't help it. You know you, it, would, I mean? it would but, be to your detriment <laughs> if you tried to get rid of that. Yeah. And I just, it's just calling a spade a spade. I look back on it sometimes. I go, fuck it out. But I, it's just prioritizing the right things at the right time is always what I've had an issue with. Consistency. But, but honestly, I'm really excited to, to, um, we we're going to drop the first episode next week. And, um, I just think it's going to create a domino effect of really cool, um, just creative juices, creative flowing. So I'm you've, excited. You've got, you've already got round of samples, right? You said? Yeah. The leisure where, yeah, we're, we're going to, um, going to send away, uh, tech packs for what we want to drop in summer. Yep. Um, so, so we're aiming for like a March launch next year. Yeah. Yeah. Around March. And okay, just, it's just like the thing with my business partner, Matt, right. He's, he doesn't like doing half assing things. He's like, he's like, I want, this is what I want. I want it to be like a, like the storytelling, you know, like so brands are like the, the thing with Earl's right. They do really, really nice photos. There's storytelling behind their photography, mm -hmm. their storytelling behind their videos and their reels and, um, and you know, all the big brands have that, but it costs a lot of money. He's like, I don't give a shit. He's like, get it done properly. So sorry, we're not rushing it. Mm -hmm. We're making sure like all the boxes are ticked and we're, yeah, we're just working out as well. Like the storyline behind it all. I do, I do a lot of, um, mentoring with econ brands and one of the, one of the most common industries, niches that people come into for the start for the first business is clothing. Yeah. So very relatable. Yes. I think in, in, unless you're experienced in business or you've got like a bit of a following behind you, clothing's going to be really difficult as yeah. a first business, right? Yeah. What's been the biggest, do you think, challenge in this like early stages of, of research and preparing sampling for clothing specifically? Um, 
Learning how to speak Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> That's been uh, a bit hard, but um, no, it's. I think, I think the when you're spending other people's money, like to that extent, you want to make sure that you're not over ordering. You want to make sure that you know your first two, three collections are gonna like. I, it, it could be a hit, or it could be you just you know just get your money back. You know mm. what I mean? So um, I think it's just being confident with your yourself because when it's your own money, you're like, okay, whatever, you know, we can do this, do that. But I, I, I don't also want to let my business partners down. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, it's just that process of making sure everything's done right. And then also when you're setting away what you want, you actually, you, you can't assume that you know what, cause they'll send it over to you. I've seen my mates with the other clothing brands. They'll send the stuff over to you and you'll go, I didn't ask for zippers up to the armpits. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, well, you fucking said it. You didn't, you didn't specify it. So good luck getting your money back from Beijing. Bro, one thing again, and I don't know how many rounds of samples you, you've got. Like you have to be so specific. <laughs> uh, you have to. You have so, to. And, and like, it don't be like, okay, yeah, one or two rounds of samples will yeah. be done. No, bro. No, no, bro. no that's why, that's why you have to be, you, if you're working in 12 months to 12 months ahead, you gotta be, you man. have to, but that's, uh, I mean, he, he brought up a really a friend of our, uh, sorry, um, with Earl, so yep. he gets a translator to be there. So when you're doing, well, initially we'll probably, we'll get, we're sorry, we're, we're planning on going over to China to this warehouse. To go it's cool. China's them. fun. I had good fun in China. Yeah? It's good where, fun. Where did you go? Um, like Shenzhen. So right. all around there. There's heaps of like ma massive city pumps. Okay. Um, and then spent some time in Shanghai as well, but that was more for the beauty expo and stuff. But I had heaps of fun in China. Yeah, well, because I'm we're, uh, I was thinking like you could probably go over there, get the translator, take over the take over the blocks that you want. So mm. you might go shopping and be like, oh, this is a perfect block. We wanted this color, this length, this size. <laughs> You take it over there, you meet with them, you see the conditions that they're, you know, making Workers these are, yeah. things and, yeah, like they're not, no, it's not a sweatshop and whatnot. So, um, you know, and, and just get it all done, done and dusted, you know what I mean? Get the bags made up, the tags made up. Like you can just get it all done there and you potentially even meet so many different other manufacturers over the course of time. So I think that's probably what will go down, but we're just planning it all now. But, yeah, that's that's – Probably the hardest thing right now. <laughs> so I think like six months, what is it? Like six months-ish, a little bit more until March, six, yeah, seven months. Yeah. It's going to go quick. It goes quickly, bro. Don't, don't think you can put no, your feet up quick. and chill. No, oh, no, 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 no. Because then as well, you got Chinese New Year from like. Yeah, Chinese New Year. It's like. They shut for a whole month yeah, pretty much. Three, yeah. four weeks at least. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's exciting times, man. But this is why it's like, like I've still, I'm still working what ability Matt obviously still has his. So it's just making sure everything's right. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's probably easier just to fly over there. And this is why a lot of clothing companies, you know, either make, don't make it initially or they get to a certain point they can't break through that like bubble. That's probably what we needed to do, man, because it's like the language barrier or they're not understanding like the yeah. tech parts and all the PDFs is like. You bah. take them out to lunch and stuff like that, man. And tr like they prioritize your shit. Mm. Like you go get on the piss with the manufacturers, yep. like go have a big succulent Chinese meal. Yeah. <laughs> did we, that's exactly what we did when we were over yeah, there. Exactly. Like, and legit they're like, a big succulent Chinese meal. Couldn't put it any other way. Like, like they take you to these restaurants and like, they take you out the back. Come, yeah. come, and there's big these spinning big, big, table big in the middle. Yeah. Table. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's what, that's what I mean, bro. It's like, um, this is all a part of the process, but this is why a lot of comp uh, clothing brands don't work out. Cause it costs a lot of money it's to hard, do that. It's hard, man. It's hard, bro. It's but hard. that's, we really have no excuse. Mm. So if Leave we leave no stone unturned the way you're doing, all right? Yeah, exactly, bro. What's uh, what's keeping you up at night? What's keeping me up at night, man? Um, probably this guy having sex. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, mate, bunk beds? No, I'm. I I I used to be. I used to not be able to sleep because I was so anxious. But um, oh man, what keeps me up at night is just what we've got going on. Um, what we've got going on, man, I'm, I'm truly excited for the next couple of months and, you know, we just need to focus a bit more. I need to, I need to focus a bit more on it and, um, just get it all locked down and get a bit of confidence. Um, the fight was keeping me up a lot. <laughs> the fight was keeping me up a lot. You get a good sleep tonight then. 
Oh, mate. <laughs> I've said in that before I got here. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned like the confidence, like bringing back your confidence back. That was something we spoke about last time. Obviously, like from the outside looking in, you're Jordan Timmy, this confident yeah. guy. But going through, you know, the stuff you went through and yeah. like you, you, you had your confidence a little bit rocked and you had to yeah. rebuild that in a different way. How has that journey gone over the last year? You're feeling more it's yourself? Good. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm back, man. I'm back. I, I I went into like a really weird shell where I just wasn't confident. I was scared. I was scared of people writing about me. I was scared of what people said about me. But what I've, what I've come to realize is that like – only ugly people throw stones. And I'm not talking about like maybe just ugly looking. So like, like I mean, just people sense. that aren't, ha yeah. aren't happy within themselves. A thousand percent. Only, only those types of people throw stones and write bad words and mm -hmm. say bad things and talk about, like talk about you behind your back. 100%. And so if you lose sleep over that shit, then you just, you're wasting, like you're wasting, you're wasting your own time and energy. So I realized to, to myself, I said, man, I've got the juice. You know what I mean? And like, why am I, why am I not fucking spraying it over everyone? You know what I'm saying? Like I genuinely believe that I have a lot of creativity that I'd love to mm. share, that I want to share, whether they like it or not. It's up to the people, but I just believe that I've got my confidence back and, and the people that I'm around, man, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It, it shows and it's such a cliche. I'm sure you've heard it. But like just hearing your last four, four, five, six months and you've been rolling with this crew that, you know, you're the product of like the five. Three months, two months, three yeah, months. Well, you're, you're the product of the, of the you know, five people say you spend the most time with. So if you're <laughs> yeah. fucking, you know, hanging out with a bunch of boys or girls who are going nowhere, that just don't have any goals, any any big plans, you're probably going to follow the same path. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's like I've got, I've got mates from my, my other circles that, I also want to have that influence on them as well. Mm. So, so sometimes you got to leave your small town yeah. and go out in the big world. You come back and you you bring those guys back with you. You know what I mean? So there's still people that I that I still I still uh, I still I still well, love like you'll and go cherish. Back and I'm you won't win them all, but maybe one. There's, there's, you'll cut through to there's that about one or two, two or three guys you know? there that I I I will I'll go back and get when I'm when I'm killing it. You know. So yeah, man, it's it's. Uh, I I finally got my confidence back, man. I got my wings back, and I really don't care what other people think. And and um, I love everyone, though. That's the difference. You know what I mean? How um, we'll start to wrap this up as well. But how how is like it just seem you you seem very different to last time energetically, like very a lot more settled. How has that mental health journey gone on for you? Because you were very much at the start of the awareness <laughs> of that journey back yeah, then, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's. There's, there's, it's not like mental health isn't this thing. Okay, I figured it out. I'm sweet forever. Yeah. It's ups and downs for everyone for as long as we live, right? But how do you feel like that journey has 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 unfolded for you? Oh man, it's uh, it's been difficult, man. Because I, I won't lie, my as you know, my last my last relationship taught me a lot about everything that I had been doing wrong my whole life. And there's still a lot of things I, I'm not perfect at all. Like there's still a lot of, a lot of work I need to do a lot. There's a lot of self work that I need to do and a lot of pulling out that I need to do. So it's, I'm not quite there, but I just think that I just, I needed to stop me. I was so hard on myself. I was so hard on myself. I was like, ah, oh. you know, so I felt bad. I felt sorry for myself. I, as I said, man, I was so scared of the outside world as well. Like I was just scared of being ridiculed and, and, um, what do you call it? Like when, oh, what do you call it? Like, um, imposter syndrome. Mm. It's like, what am I actually, what am I actually selling? What am I actually saying? I'm just in the front of the camera, just uh, like a clown, you know, like trying to make people laugh and bringing people in. But for what though? Like, yeah. what am I, what's the purpose of all this? So I found purpose. I've found that I've, as I said, I've removed emotion from anything now. I don't really, I'm not really emotional apart from, you know, maybe death that that's obviously a very, uh, had a couple of situations over the last couple of months, but I don't let anything else get to me. Mm. Uh, anything like emotionally, like it's all, Everything's maybe Chinese farmer. Yeah. It's good. Look, it's good. It's good to see, bro. Um, it's good to see you start to come out on the other end of that. And like that relationship that you had and lost was a gift to you. Yes. And you needed, you probably needed to lose it to, to realize all these things. Yeah, for sure. For you, sure. Cause that was, that was honestly the greatest love that I've ever, ex ever experienced. And I didn't realize it at the time. And, um, I'll always be in debt to that situation yeah. because, um, 
it, it taught me so much, man. It taught me so much. It, it actually, uh, I didn't realize like, yeah, it just, you want to be, you want to be, um, you want to be able to look after people. You know, you want to be able to look after your inner circle. Am I there yet? No. But I will be, though, I reckon. Mm. I believe. Well, first, you've got to be able to look after yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. See how we go on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> what, one thing we spoke about as well, uh, and you've, do, you've done it, um, probably not at the consistency that, that you, you would like, but like you in the podcast form is like a, a magical recipe, right? What's yeah. the, what's the plans with that? Like, cause if you had the right format, the right, stru- you know, it could be people fucking love, they love you in that format, right? What's, well, what's happening in that space? <laughs> well, bro, you know what, now that I'm, now that I'm potentially, uh, so sorry, now that I'm, I'm going to be working for myself soon, mm-hmm. um, starting this brand and. You don't have to answer to anyone. So I I don't know if it's going to be like a uh, jump on by myself and just look at certain situations going on in the world or just interview a couple people here and there. Um, but as I said, it's it's finding that balance between like the clothing brand and the the content space. You Priorities, know I mean? right? What are you re- yeah. what, what's so most like, important to you? Sometimes you can get carried away with the content and then you're like, oh yeah, and buy the hoodies. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it's just I'll be building I'll be building the brand around, you know, myself and Matt, but then also the the clothes will be have to be at the forefront of everything. But I can't help I can't I can't help it. I think I would love to see you do podcasts and interview people on like relationships. Yeah. I think that's that's where it always goes to, man. It always goes to and, and now that I've got nothing to lose apart from someone buying something off me, like I'm not a disrespectful person and I don't like putting people down, but mm. speaking openly and honestly, when you realize that you can't keep everyone fucking happy. Like that's when you you become. You've the already best. lost if you're trying to do that. Exactly. You can't keep anyone happy. You really can't. You can't keep. You literally. I didn't realize that until recently. Yeah. And <laughs> once you let go of that, and you focus on what you have around you and who you have around you and what you're building, then you fucking can take over the world. Fucking oath. I reckon. Say launch early next year. We'll get you back in in a year. We'll do it. We'll yes. do a catch up once your boys have launched. We're we'll yes. talking about that, all the learnings yeah. that have come through, hopefully talking about heaps of early success. Now for everyone that wants to jump along, obviously people will find you on Instagram, jordan.simi, right? Yes, yes, where, yes. Where can people find Past Love and Heart just, Gallery? What's the best uh, place? So um, just on Instagram, um, Heart Gallery, the Heart Gallery website's um, live. So that's all there. Um, past love was getting built out at the moment. I think he's in Bali on the piss at the moment, the web developer. So <laughs> we were just with him actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, just on Instagram man. Instagram for now. So, um, we'll See be dropping, we'll be dropping there, the yeah. vlog on, uh, on the past love YouTube channel as Sick. well. So that'll be most likely Sunday after the this boxing. Sunday? <laughs> this yeah, Sunday. This coming so Sunday. it'll be out a couple of days before. Before this podcast, you listen to this and you want to check out the vlogs. Oh, jump so on. after or before? Well, this is the, the vlogs coming out on Sunday. What time is it? When's this one dropping? Tuesday. Oh, perfect. So, okay, yeah, cool. I might drop it, it on Wednesday. It'll then. be out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, have a look. It'll be out. It's either, it was just out a couple of days ago or it'll be <laughs> the out. The vlogs are back. The vlogs are back. Anyway, let's wrap it up there. The vlogs are back. Jordan, Simi, thank you. Thanks, brother. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it, Do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do your friends a favor and share this with them and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.